Hello and welcome to SFA Now. On today's episode, we will take a look into SFA Baseball's team, the Rec Center's upcoming wellness walking tour, and an entertainment journalist from the Pine Log. Stay tuned. Welcome to SFA Now. I'm Preston Dindy. And I'm Brianna Cole. The SFA Lumberjacks men's team just finished their regular season with a 31-2 record. It's only the second time a Southland Conference team has ever finished with at least 30 wins in a regular season. The Jacks finished up at home beating Oral Roberts by 72 and defeating Central Arkansas 85-62. After this, SFA headed to the Southland Conference to play for a chance in the spot for this year's NCAA tournament. The Lumberjacks beat Northern State 85-78 to to move their championship game against Sam Houston. The Jacks took it to the rival Bearcats, defeating them 68-49. to Now that the Jacks have won their conference tournament, they move to the big dance known as March Madness. SFA is the number 12 seed in San Diego Regional and will play number 5 seed Virginia. Commonwealth University, it's only the second time the Lumberjacks have made their way into the tournament. Tip-off is at 627 on Friday, March 21st on True TV. Way to go, SFA and Axum Jacks. This past weekend, SFA's men's baseball team took on Magnus State at J.C.'s Field in Nacogdoches. The Jacks won on Friday 5-1 against the Cowboys of Magnus. On Saturday, the two teams had quite a grudge match going, but the rain delayed them until Sunday. The Jacks lost that game 5-4 in 13 innings of play. The two teams had a 30-minute break and began their third and final game of the series. It was a high-scoring game for both teams, but SFA couldn't quite pull off with the W. The Jacks lost 10 to 7 in 9 innings. SFA is now 8 and 10 on the season and 1 on 2 in conference play. The Jacks begin a 5 game road series in Lubbock to take on the Red Raiders of Texas Tech and then to Natchitoches to take on Northwestern State. The boys come back home to Natchitoches on March 25th to take on Dallas Baptist and to start a three-game series against Central Arkansas and JC's Field. Go out and support the team, help them act down the competition. The SFA Dining and Campus Recreation hosted a wellness walking tour this week, hoping the increase in the awareness of healthy living, the hour included information of wellness series available through the Campus Recreation and SFA Dining, as well as tips and tricks on how to active, eat well, dining halls and rental retail through the campus. The tour provided a look at the recreational center as it displays numerous ways to stay fit, active with an indoor track, rock climbing, as well as cable and free weight equipment to build muscle. The tour began at the Recreation Center and supposedly throughout the campus, stopping at, only, stopping at a dining location along the tour. For more information about staying fit and active around campus, feel free to walk into the Recreation Center to learn more. With the big event right around the corner, SFA students are gathering together to prepare for the big day. They got a chance to talk with Mr. Dalini, who informs us on what the big event is and why we participate in it. Um, the big event is basically this one big day of service where we give back to the Nacogdoches community. Um, we have like over a thousand students who come out and they fulfill different projects. And it's just our way of trying to show our appreciation and thanks to the <coughs> Nacogdoches community. And we're also trying to um, re develop those relationships between the SFA students and the Nacogdoches community too. So it's just a really great way for that to do. That's what we're really all about. And then um, we're also a community service based organization. So we do other community service as an organization outside the big event. but. Um, 
were in charge of the actual date for the big event and then also MLK Day of Service, which was in January. Um, this year, the big event is going to be this Saturday, which is March the 22nd at noon, and we're going to have registration opening up in the Grand Ballroom. So we're expecting um, everyone to come out and have an amazing time, go fulfill their projects, and um, I look forward to seeing everyone that day. The big event has turned into one of SFA's most proud anticipated events throughout the years. Many SFA students can attend this event and join one of the largest community service activities done by Stephen F. Austin State University. So if you're looking for something to do, come out and help give back to your Nacogdoches community. <coughs> Saturday, March 22nd, just go to the Grand Ballroom located in the center, <coughs> Student Center to register. The planetarium on SFA's campus, located on the first floor of the Math Nursing Building, will be presenting its 50-minute feature, Mars Quest. The planetarium has a Spitz 512 star projector under a 30-foot dome and the seating capacity of 50. The star projector can accurately simulate the night sky as seen from anywhere on the Earth for any day in the past or future. The planetarium's special features include 30 slide projectors, a large screen CRT video projector, laser disc DVD players, and all sky projection system, and a red, blue, green special effects lighting system. The Mars Quest presentation traces humanity's centuries long culture and scientific fascination with the planet Mars. The first section is homage, which traces Mars through history. Mars in focus details Mars during our time as seen in the night sky. Mars in the future addresses humans traveling to the red planet. The show ends with Rhapsody of Red Planet, poetic and futuristic Ode to Mars. Mars Quest plays on Fridays at 7 p.m. Dates March the 21st, April the 11th. Admission is only $2. The Stephen F. Austin School of Music hosted a special piano recital for Mr. Kerry Bahan, who, who performed this personal showcase of written piano and sonatas. Following from fast upbeat musical runs to slow sad swings, Mr. Bahan's fingers seemed to fly over the piano keys. Stephen F. Austin School of Music hosted a special piano recital for Mr. Kerry Baum who performed his showcase of personal written piano rhapsodies and sonatas. Oh, wow. Following from fast upbeat musical runs to slow sad swings, Mr. Baum's fingers seemed to fly all over the piano keys. The 10-foot Steinway Grand Piano roared to life with the transposed personal touch of Mr. Baum's music. When concluding the recital, the audience gave a standing ovation and many were in awe of the musicality one person can perform. Many hours of practicing will only enhance your talent, and Mr. Kerry Baum put on a performance people will not soon forget. If you'd like more information on any of the stories you've heard today, be sure to check out our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash SFA now. Also, if you have any interesting events yeah, going on that you think will be newsworthy, please make sure to post it on our wall and share it with us. Stay with us after the break. Check out how some SFA students are getting in shape for a cause. Welcome back to SFA Now. In Lufkin, one gym is inspiring students to get in shape and express themselves through boxing. Alex Bellini has the story. Fighters, boxers, and kids just wanting to learn how to fight. 
the gym is ran and supervised by head coach James Hubbard. Coach Hubbard is a professional MMA fighter and former boxer who grew up in Lufkin, Texas, and has always wanted to train others and teach them the meaning of boxing and how to control their body and execute their negative energy. Coach Hubbard explains to us why he coaches boxing and also what it takes to be a boxer or MMA fighter, physically and mentally. He used to, but it's just, I don't know. Well, I started out boxing myself. And I thought I'd be able to move on to coach and make, make other kids you know, good and take them places that I wanted to go. You know, it's basically just fulfilling my dream through others, too, pushing, pushing kids to do better. You gotta be real focused, discipline, you know, technique. You, gotta, you basically got to discipline yourself. Just you know, being healthy, eating healthy, you know, clean living. Kids are just scared to come in here and box because they're afraid that they might get hurt. No, nah, I mean, I want everybody to have a chance to come in and learn. You know, if you bring somebody in and beat them up, they don't, they don't learn. You know, you discourage them and they run away and they leave and they never come back. You got to throw people off on different levels. I got six pro fighters in here right now, including myself. Some boxers, some MMA. We got a chance to sit down with one of Stephen F. Austin State University's own regional Golden Gloves champion, Curtis Hightower who explains to us why he comes to Lufkin and what boxing means to him. Uh, uh, my dad been training me since I was young, uh, since I was about eight or so. Um, and back then, uh, to be honest, I was a bit of a coward, so I never really took too much stake into it. I never really uh, valued the, the lessons of it or anything else like that. But my dad has been training me since, uh, since I was about eight years old. And, uh, you know, uh, when I actually came up to, to Nacogdoches, uh, when I came up to college, I didn't want to look back on my life and regret things, you know, things that I, you know, that I thought that I would like to do or try to do, at least be able to say, you know, that, that I tried to do them. The Lufkin Gym, I found out about the Lufkin Gym through uh, Oscar Morales. Uh, there's a lot of things, like I was training with Ivan Zbieta uh, and Chris uh, Gonzalez uh, at first. And uh, they were the ones that were getting the rust off me. And, you know, I started taking things, especially with boxing, a lot more seriously when I ran into them and uh, started really training with them. And uh, we met up with Oscar Morales, who was trying to start a boxing gym or a boxing club up here in Nacogdoches, Texas. And he was on the USA team. He was the USA team alternate, uh, you know, fought at 126. Uh, and this was the gym that Oscar used to train out of when he was younger. A lot of the, a lot of the older fighters, they remember him from being here when he was younger because he was, you know, he was here. He was with them. Uh, so that's how I found out about, about, uh, about Lufkin, about this gym down here. Curtis also explains to us why boxing is so important to him and why he takes the time out of his day to come up to Lufkin and just to train his heart out to be the best that he can be. I've, after the time, hard sweat, you know, the blood and tears shed in here, it's, it means everything. You know, it's, 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 it is, you know, like my coach says, it's a, it's a lifestyle. It's, you know, it's beautiful, really. You get in there and you train your body and mind to be able to do things in a beautiful way you never thought you could. You know, boxing is a graceful sport. It's, I think it's a sport that, you know, every man should have to do because it teaches you about the world. You, know, you get in here and you box, you know, you get in that ring and you fight. Yeah, but it's only you. Only you can go in there and do it. Only you can go in there and handle the business you need to handle. You know, you got people telling you what to do. Your corner will tell you what to do. You choose to ignore them. It's like life. You know, I think boxing is, is the greatest metaphor for life that, that I've ever been able to physically experience. Coach Hubbard says that there are about 20 to 40 fighters that come into the gym each day just to get some training. So if you're looking forward to becoming a boxer, an MMA fighter, or even just needing a place to blow off some steam, go visit the Boys and Girls Club of DB's Texas in Lufkin, where their gym hours are Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 5 to 9 p.m. They inspire and encourage all beginners to just come into the gym and try it out. Reporting for SFA Now, I'm Alex Bellini. Some take up dancing as a fun hobby to stay in shape and express their artistic side. But here at SFA, some dancers have decided to dance for a worthy cause. 
The stage. The lights. The Kennedy Auditorium fills every semester with a crowd of people ready to see the Dancers Against Cancer. Weekly practices are held to prepare for the performances. During rehearsal, the dancers stretch and do exercises across the floor before they run through choreography. We went over the basic uh, choreography for my contemporary piece. Um, we ran it in groups a couple times and I split them into smaller groups. So instead of groups of four, we went you know, in eight different groups. Um, and then we worked on our team dance. Uh, this weekend is our first team practice together in a long time. The leadership team meets bi-weekly to discuss the upcoming dances and the plans for the next two weeks. Whenever we have leader meetings, it's just to make sure that we're all on the same page because a lot of us choreograph and stuff like that, and a lot of members have different questions, and so it's just good to be on the same page at all times. The group focuses on different types of dance, ballet, hip-hop, palm, jazz, tap, contemporary, and African dance. Each semester, Dancers Against Cancer, or DAC, hold a benefit concert not only to showcase their talent, but to dance for a cause. I found DAC and it was something that I loved dancing and it was something for a good cause for helping to raise awareness about cancer because my grandma was diagnosed with brain cancer. The proceeds from the concert will go to Alex's Lemonade Stand. They are an organization that was started by a little girl named Alex and she um, sold lemonade to help raise money for other people's treatments because she had cancer. We knew the reality of neuroblastoma and that she she probably would not survive, not survive. I raise money. For what? Cancer research. Lemonade! Oh. A four-year-old created that has helped literally keep my son alive. Dances Against Cancer also plan to distribute some of the proceeds to a local person in need. In Nacogdoches, Brianna Cole reporting. Pecan Park draws many SFA students and Nacogdoches locals every day. One many may not know is that there is some history behind the well-known bridge at Pecan Park. Alex Bellini has the story. Here in Nacogdoches, Texas, historic Goodman Bridge resides at Pecan Park to settle for its new home. Some people may not know that before the bridge was over at Pecan Park, it was originally stationed and built over the Angelina River to connect Nacogdoches and Cherokee counties back in 1929. Its unique and old structure was not welded together like most bridges. Instead, it was put together by rivets. This bridge is one of the few Warren Trust bridges left in the state of Texas. The bridge was put at Pecan Park to resemble the history that Nacogdoches tries to preserve and to attract the community to the park. A lot of people actually come out to the park just to stand and take pictures on the bridge. Pecan Park is across the street from Nacogdoches' own Stephen F. Austin State University. So if you're a student at SFA or just a resident of Nacogdoches, then go check out the Goodman Bridge over at Pecan Park to remiss some of Nacogdoches' historic landmarks. I'm Alex Bellini, reporting for SFA Now. Stay tuned after the break when we sit down with the Pine Log Entertainment Journalist and Copy Editor. Remember to like our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash SFA Now. If you have any stories you would like to see here, post it on our wall and maybe you'll see it soon. Welcome back to SFA Now. I'm sitting here with Pine Logs Entertainment Journalist and Copy Editor, Robert Key. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. Glad to be here. That's good. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a journalist major here at SFA. I'm in my senior year and I'm also, in, I'm also minoring pardon me, in radio and television. Tell me something about your background. My background, well, I'm actually from Houston, Texas. I was born on April 19th, 92, and um, I currently live here in Nacogdoches, of course, and yeah, that's, that's about it. How long have you worked for the Pine Log? I have been working for the Pine Log since fall of 2012. I originally started out as a contributing writer and uh, worked my way to staff writer that same year. So why do you want to be, or why are you comfortable being with the entertainment editor? Well, I wanted to be entertainment because I just, I think that's the most interesting part about news. I, I don't know, politics and stuff has never really been my thing, but I've always been fascinated by, you know, TV stars, uh, music stuff, uh, video games, you know, just anything entertainment. So that's why I shot for that. What exactly about entertainment and movies really just excites you? What about it? Well, th there's, there's just a bunch of different things. One, I keep up. I'm a pretty avid movie watcher, I would say, and I'm fascinated by the creation process of movies and, you know, music. I think these people are just like 
stupid talented. Like they're just very good at what they do. And I kind of, I just like researching like, you know, how it is they go about doing that. What's your favorite topic that you've covered? Oh, no question, video games by far. Video games? Yeah. Why? Why video games? Well, it, it's something I consider a passion in my life. I have been playing them since I was four years old. And my ultimate goal is actually to become a video game journalist once I'm done here at SFA. Okay. Yeah. Tell me about the challenges that you face throughout being the entertainment and copy editor. Well, being entertainment, you know, you have to you have to do a lot of research around the SFA campus because you have to find you just have to find out what's going on and sometimes digging for that information can be a little tough. And copy editor, well, that job is pretty much I edit everybody's everybody's articles and if there's any kind of grammatical mistake, you know, that that falls on my that falls on my head. And so there's kind of a lot of pressure, you know, thinking about these are all there are all these eyes like looking at the newspaper and looking online and if you make that mistake then it's pretty much your fault. How do you handle the pressure in balancing being a student and working? Read extra carefully, definitely for sure. And um yeah, I mean that's just about it. I obviously I look at the AP style book a lot just to make sure everything's in line. What are you currently working on? I'm currently working on the pig or I will be rather tomorrow, the pig and pigment exhibit that's going on in the Griffith Arts Building. It's actually, it's basically art students create their own artistic work through, you know, just through their own vision. And then from there, there's actually uh, poetry writers. They write a poem based on the art that somebody created. And that is happening tomorrow on Friday, March 20th, 21st, my bad, sorry. So what new movies and entertainment are you working on right now? Well, I'm not, I'm not currently working on any movies, but I did recently see 12 Years a Slave, and that won Best Picture for the Oscars, and I would, I would highly recommend seeing it. It's a bit brutal, but it's a very, very good picture, and it depicts what happened to this man who was, you know, obviously a slave for 12 years. It depicts very well what happened to him based on the book that he wrote himself. Yeah, I was very proud that the movie won. I believe it got two or three Oscars. Yeah, it also won Best Supporting Actress, and she, she did a great job in that, and yeah, best picture. I think it actually, it's the first movie I've seen in a while where I, I can actually say, wow, that actually deserved best picture. Why do you think it actually deserved the best picture? Oh, there, there was just many, there's many different things. One, the performances were just fantastic. Uh, Michael Fassbender plays the slave, the really, really just cruel, to say the least, slave owner. Um, I'm not sure what the main actor's name for, who plays Solomon Northup, he's the main character. I'm not sure what his name is, but he did a fantastic job and uh, it was just shot very well. And yeah, I mean, that's about it. What's your, fir your favorite aspect of being in entertainment in the copy editor? Well, entertainment, you know, I love being able to lay out my own page. I kind of like having that control in a way because I can make it my own thing. And copy, I'm, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to this, admittedly, but I just, I love proofreading people's stuff and telling them what they did wrong. Why do you like telling people what they did wrong? I'm just cynical like that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I don't know. I've always, like, ever since I started working in, uh, journalism here, I've just really enjoyed, uh, in a weird sort of way, I enjoy AP style and just making sure that things are correct in so, accordance to that. So how long have you been the copy editor in the I actually just started this semester. Um, I, I didn't have room in my schedule before. I've only, I'm only taking six hours this semester because the classes I want to take that are left are only offered in fall. So I thought, you know, I need something to do to occupy my time, so why not be an editing nerd? Pretty much. So what are some of the mistakes that you've made and how did you <laughs> learn from them? <laughs> um, well, not, not necessarily when I was copy editor, but last semester, this was actually one of, my, one of the pieces I did that was, I was actually pretty proud of. Um, it was the Dia de los Muertos um, art exhibit in downtown Acidoches. And uh, I put de los as one word instead of two separate words um. in my headline and throughout the article because well, it was a stupid mistake. That's really all yeah. I can say. <laughs> but sometimes it happens. I'm yeah, yeah. sure English is your first language, so. Yeah. See. See. <laughs> See. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. So do you have any advice to someone that wants to become the mm -hmm. entertainment and the copy editor? Well, I would say, you know, you can't, in the journalism world, there's no, there's no time to be wasted. If, you, if you're looking to go up, you know, from where you are, just go for it. You know, don't. Don't just stay in your same position. If you, if you feel you have a passion for something, go for it. And I would also suggest blogging for somebody who may not necessarily have a news outlet that they write for because that's, that's actually how you can get discovered. Well, thank you so much, Robert Key, for joining us today. Thank you for having me.
Well, that is it for this segment. Thank you for joining SFA Now. All right.